How to rebuild the Stuart Models 5A steam engine, part 4. Fitting main bearing oil seals, modifying one of the bearing top caps and cleaning up the flywheel casting. At the moment I'm just doing a quick dry assembly of the crankshaft in the bearings with the top caps on. And there is a problem. One of the top caps is smaller than the other. Both of these top caps are very substantial castings and even the thinner one of the two has more than enough strength to hold the bearings in place. And the other thing I'm not happy about is the amount of side play on the crankshaft. This side play is controlled to a certain extent by the position of the big end brasses between the crank webs. Obviously the big end brasses are fastened to the connecting rod which fastens to the crosshead, so it can't move very far. Provided of course that the big end brasses are a good fit between the crank webs. There is a quick fix for this and all you have to do is fit a silicone o-ring or a viton o-ring onto the crankshaft between the crank webs and the bearings. I've used this trick several times on smaller steam engines and the good thing is it stops the side to side play and it stops the tapping that you get with side to side play as the crank web taps against the bearing itself. I've also used silicone o-rings on crankshafts to prevent oil loss down the front of the engine and this seems to work quite well. And as I'm experimenting with this engine, I think I'll fit oil seals to both sides of the bearings. If I machine a very small amount of metal off the bearing bushes that are made from both ends, and this will allow the O-rings to locate neatly into the main bearings. I've worked on quite a few Stuart 5A steam engines over the years, and there's often been a problem with the bearings. Because they're worn, the top caps become ineffective and act as a clamp. And I've also seen quite a lot of scored 5A crankshafts caused by over tightening of the top caps. I may be wrong, but this system seems to be much simpler. I'm using the top caps to clamp the main bearings to hold the bushes in place. And when the bushes get worn, clamping the top caps is not going to do anything, so I just loosen the top caps, remove the bushes, make two new ones, and refit them to the engine. And all that has to come off the engine is the flywheel and the valve gear eccentrics. I quite like the idea of oil control because steam engines drop oil all over the place. A while back many viewers were recommending this stuff, it's called JB Weld. JB Weld is an American product and it really is good. I would say that there's a place for this stuff in every workshop. I'm going to use it in conjunction with a couple of pieces of sheet metal to make the thinner of the two top caps the same width as the other one. And this job starts by marking out the sheet metal just holding the sheet metal against the top cap and scribing it with a needle file. And after marking out the pieces of sheet metal, I'm going to cut them to size on the bandsaw and then finish them off by using the one inch belt sander followed by a small drum sander like this one. The semicircular cutout that I'm currently working on with the drum sander was profiled using a one inch belt sander. During the belt sanding job, the piece of metal obviously got very, very hot so I kept quenching it in water, but eventually the water built up on the table of the belt sander and kept it cool. It's most important to clean up the parts that you're going to stick with this JB Weld. JB Weld is two-part epoxy resin. You mix the two together in equal amounts and they go really hard. But there's a difference. One of the tubes has metal particles in with the resin. You've just been watching me roughening up the part to make a good key for the resin. And now it's time to mix the two parts together. There's a little bit of urgency when you mix 5 minute epoxy resin, but this is the 24 hour version. So there's really no rush, you can take your time, mix it thoroughly and then apply it to the parts. A quick health and safety warning, always read the directions on the pack and when you finish using this sort of stuff or any chemicals, wash your hands thoroughly, preferably twice. The front of the sole plate casting was a bit rough and I used some JB Weld to skin this and once it was rubbed down, and it rubs down beautifully, it looks really good. There's going to be a lot of painting coming up soon. Here are the rough castings for the box bed and the flywheel just as I got them out of the box. I showed in great detail how to use a file to remove the flashings. And these flashings are usually big lumps of metal, small lumps of metal or sharp pieces left by the casting process and these have to be removed with a file because they're very sharp and they don't look good anyway. And I'm now doing the same with the flywheel and just like the box bed I put it in the vise and used a file to start with 
but I left that out because I've shown you enough filing in episode 2. And as a lot of the parts of the flywheel are curved, it's a good idea to use a small drum sander to finish off the job. It's important to frequently change the sanding drum, and I've always found this to be a bit of a pain, but I've found an alternative use for a barco adjustable spanner. It's just the right size to hold the sanding drum and allow me to tap the rubber part into the drum. And then I just tighten the screw and it's back to work on the flywheel. It's probably a good idea to wear a mask when doing this, because you don't want to be breathing in any of the sand or the iron filings for that matter. My brain has a bit of a problem with flywheels. No matter how many times I clean up the part, I find some that I've missed. So I'm taking no chances with this flywheel. I'm being very thorough and I'm going over every part of it twice. And it's the same when I paint a flywheel. I can never paint a flywheel in one go. No matter what I do, I miss parts. I paint it, I put it on one side, I wait for the paint to dry, and then I look, and there are parts where I haven't painted. So, I do it again. And usually after the second coat, all of the surfaces are covered in paint. This flywheel is going to be machined on the inside edge of this part I'm currently grinding away. And to do this part of the job, I will be using a boring tool. But I'm not going to machine all the way up to the spokes. I'm just going to clean up the inside edge. And talking about cleaning up, look at the state of the bench. It's time to give this a clean. And even worse, look at my delicate piano playing fingers. Time to go in the house, wash my hands and make a cup of tea. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.